chapter 12. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was yet in Egypt, whither he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. And they sent and called him, that Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel, Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make you the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve you. And he said unto them, Depart, yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give you me to return answer to this people? And they spoke unto him, saying, If you will be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and took counsel with the young men that were grown up with him, that stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give you, that you may return answer to this, that we may return answer to this people, who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that your father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spoke unto him, saying, Thus shalt you say unto this people that spoke unto you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make you it lighter unto us. Thus shalt you speak unto them, My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did burden you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke, My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king bade, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, and forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and spoke to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king hearkened not unto the people, for it was a thing brought about of the Lord, that he might establish his word, which he spoke by the hand of Ahiah, the, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse, to your tents, O Israel, now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the levy, and all Israel stoned him with stones so that he died. And King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was returned, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, to be assembled, all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men that were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom back to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, to the rest of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is of me. So they hearkened unto the word of the Lord, and returned, and went their way according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam 
built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and dwelt therein and he went out from there and built Penuel and and Jeroboam said in his heart, Now will the kingdom return to the house of David, if this people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Then will the heart of this people turn back unto the Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me, and return to Rehoboam, the king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold. And he said unto them, You have gone up, Long enough to Jerusalem, behold your gods, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made houses of high places, and made priests from all the people that were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he went up unto the altar, so did he in Bethel, to sacrifice unto the calves that he, he made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places that he made. And he went up unto the altar which he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, even on the month which he made, which he had devised of his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel and went up unto the altar to offer. Okay, let's go back to verse 1. Now, we'll remember yesterday, or the last chapter of that. Solomon had sinned greatly before the Lord, and now the Lord told Solomon he was going to tear the kingdom up and give it away to his neighbor, or his servant. And we're going to find out that's what's going to happen. God's going to show you what he's doing here. He's going to make another example. We're going to start again. They didn't catch on the first time. Uh, this time either so we're going to have to start again and yesterday he sent some contenders now to uh, against Solomon these these troublemakers he sent Hadad, Razon, and Yeroboam and this is the mighty one who moves softly this commander uh, striving with the nations and today we're going to pick the story up with with Solomon has died and his sons taken over. Verse 1 And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. So now, and Shechem is this place, this means back. And it's this, I refer to it as this place before. And he has went back now to, and all the people of Israel have come and gathered to make him king. And it came to back, pass. When Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was yet in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. And Jeroboam is this, is this striving with the nations, this strife of the nations. And he has been in Egypt, this land of enclosures, hiding now from Solomon, because Solomon was going to kill him. Even though Solomon had made him an officer over the, the labors of Joseph, and this had got him much attention, and that's why he's come back. Now he's going to try to exert some of his force over the nation. Well, remember now, this is that that the prophet has come out and promised Jeroboam ten ten of the tribes, three, and they sent and called him that Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spoke unto Rehoboam, saying, So now the children of Israel have got Jeroboam, and they've all come up to Shechem now. They're, they've come to make Rehoboam the king. But there's these certain things are going to happen here. And, so, and Rehoboam is this place that's made wide for the nations, this Rechab of the nations. Four, your father made our yoke grievous, or three, and they sent, 
or and so now the people have come up and they're going to tell Rehoboam for your father made our yoke grievous now therefore make you the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter and we will serve you and now we remember I've told you of this much much great money that it's took to run the kingdom of Solomon all this great wealth that it takes to keep his kingdom going and now the this has become a great taxation and this is a yoke and a, and a great levy that's been put upon the people and a burden that they're caused to bear to run this magnificent establishment five and he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. So they've come to Rehoboam, all the people now, and they've said, you know, try, hey, take away all this taxation, and we will serve you. And he's told them now, go, go back home for three days, three days. These, a, a little circle of light. This is three, means complete, understanding, and the, so the people now, they've gone back to the house. And in three days they will return. Six, and the king Rehoboam took counsel with the old men. And he had, that had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give you me to return answer to this people? So now Rehoboam has went and spoke with these old men, these ones that served his father in, in um, counsel. And he's asked them, What do you say I should do? Seven. And they spoke unto him, saying, If you will be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. So now the old men, they've told him now, If you will speak kind good words to this people, and if you will serve them, be their servant, then they will serve you forever. Their instruction should have been now, if if you will listen to the people and hearken unto the law of God, say if you will follow after what God said now, then would the kingdom be established. Eight, but he forsook the counsel of the old men which he had given him, and took counsel with the young men that were grown up with him that stood before him. And we're going to find out, see now these young men, these I uh, We've spoke of these at Baharim, this village of these young men. These they don't got much knowledge. We're going to find out now. The king's going to take their counsel. He's going to take the counsel of this generation that he's been hanging out with. And we're going to find it's going to get him in a lot of trouble. Nine, and he said unto them, What counsel give you that we may return answer to this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that my, your father did put upon us lighter. So now he's asked his buddies, this, these ones that he's grown up with, saying, what do you say I should do to these people They've that asked me to take away the taxation? Ten, and the young men that were grown up with him spoke unto him, saying, Thus shall you say unto this people that spoke unto you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make you it lighter unto us. Thus shall you speak unto them. My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. So they, them, these young men are telling him now, and, and what they're saying is not really a, a, a very good thing, and we won't go into detail what it means, but you tell them that you, you thought your, my daddy was bad, but I am ten times the man my daddy ever thought about being, is basically what he's saying here. In kinder words, leaven, and now whereas my father did burden you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Rehoboam, well, we see now God has hardened Rehoboam's heart, because God does control the hearts of men. And, and he has promised him now, he's going to take away the whips that his father chastised him with, and considering these as whips, these burdens, these taxation he's laid upon them. Because when you call someone to serve under a yoke of taxation, it's a slavery nonetheless. And he's saying, you thought that was bad now. I'm going to add to it. 
He used whips, but I'll use scorpions, and we're going to find now in the end. That's what's being used as these scorpions. See, the thing about a scorpion, he don't have a stomach, and, his, and he uses his tail to sting you and eject these, this poison in you that will digest you from the inside out, and you really become the scorpion's stomach. The host does, and he sucks that which is inside out, and only the shell is left. Twelve, so Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king asked them, saying, Come to me again the third day. So now Jeroboam is one who will be caused to strive with the nations, and Rehoboam, who is this place made wide now, God's making these two witnesses, have come back together this third day. Now, there's complete understanding here. Because Rehoboam had told him to. 13, And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him. And we'll see now that he did take the counsel of these boys and didn't listen to the old men who were wiser and, and, and more experienced. 15, So the king hearkened not unto the people, for it was a thing brought about of the Lord, that he might establish his word, which, he, which the Lord spoke by the hand of Ahiah the Shilonite, to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So we, we remember now what Ahiah, my brother is God, my brother is Yah. This Shelonite, this one who comes from the place of rest, what he said to Yeterboam when he told him that he tore the garment into twelve pieces, ten he gave to Yeterboam, these ten nations and these ten tribes, and then one he would give to Rehoboam. Sixteen, and when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse to your tents. O Israel, now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. So now we see, now God has torn the kingdom in half. And that's what he's trying to show you. Now God controls all these things. He has told by the prophets what he would do. He has done it. This same example goes over and over. They are rent because of their sin. They are rent because they have turned from God. So he does this to punish the whole nation, and he's using the kings to make an example now. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. So, And we'll see that this is what happens. Now there are two nations. There is Judah, where is the house of God, this Jerusalem. And Rehoboam, this place where that is made wide for the nations, reigns over it. And Yerubo and J Jeroboam, or Yehoboam, is reigns over all the ten tribes of Israel. This strife that is sent among the nations, they being one in the same. Eight. The king Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the levy, and all of Israel stoned him with stones, so that he died. And king Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So we see Rehoboam's on the run now. He's jumped in his chariot and he's running because this one he has put over taxation. God has exalted Adoram. The Lord is exalted. This Adoram, who's over the levy, who's over all this taxation, Solomon put him over it. They've stoned him to death because he's come down to collect the taxes. After all this has happened, Rehoboam still thinks he can collect the taxation that his father has placed on the people. 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And this would be the great division that was made. This will be this this wound that is made and there will be we this a lot will be all about this story as we go through 20 and it came to pass when all Israel heard that 
Yeroboam was returned, that they rent and caught, sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. So we'll see. Now they took Jeroboam and made him king over Israel. And Rehoboam is king over Judah. And God, this is what we've done. We've tore the kingdom in half. Now ten tribes under Jeroboam, one tribe under Rehoboam. 21. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, be assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men that were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom back to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So Rehoboam, he gets back to Jerusalem now after they've killed Adoram. And he assembles all, the, all Judah and the house of Benjamin, this tribe of Benjamin now, out of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin, it means the son of my right hand, or this work that God is using. And this hundred, now is judgment. Four score, work in the redemption. Thousand is the divine fulfillment. So this judgment here is going to work redemption. And this shall be God's divine fulfillment. And we have to pay attention to what's going on here. Because these are the prophecies now of the end. This wheel that we're on that goes round and round. 22, but the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying. So now Shemaiah, he, God has told him to go speak to Rehoboam. 23, speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying. 24, thus saith the Lord, you shall not go up nor fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is of me. So they hearkened unto the word of the Lord and returned and went their way according to the word of the Lord. So now God sent Shemaiah. This means listen, listen, my God. And he's told... Rehoboam and all the house of Benjamin, don't don't go up and fight against your brethren because this thing is of God. This is what he's doing now. Because Rehoboam knows God had told his father the kingdom would be rent, and this is exactly what's happened. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and dwelt therein, and he went out from there and built Penuel. So after this is all over, Jeroboam goes up into the hill country, these high places of Ephraim, these, this place of the double-fruited. And there he built Shechem, this place back, this place of remembrance now, called the remembrance, what we're getting ready to hear, because this happened now down at the foot of the mountain, these that got in a hurry. And that, from there he went out and he built Penuel. And Penuel means this place where they're turned away from the mighty one. 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now will the kingdom return to the house of David. So Jeroboam, the strife of the nations, has thought now in his own heart, Surely this people will return to the house of David. Why? Because there's a ceremony coming up which when they finished the house of God that they made to celebrate when they finished the house of God. And he's afraid if they go back up there that they will return to this old understanding, this old way. 27, if the people, if this people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then will the heart of this people turn back unto the Lord even unto Rehoboam, the king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, the king of Judah. So now Jeroboam's thinking to himself, now if they go up there and sacrifice in this great house of God in Jerusalem, then the people will turn back to Rehoboam and they will kill me and he will be their king. And Rehoboam, we're going to find out, is this place made wide, see? And God has told us this, this about this place that made wide, this place, how he's going to add to his flock. 28, 
Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. And he said unto them, You have gone up long enough to Jerusalem. Behold your gods, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So now look what Jeroboam has done. He's made him two calves. Two, witness now, these calves of gold, these idols made now of that which belonged to God. And he's made these idols now. This, And he's telling Israel, these are the gods that brought you out of Israel. These are the gods that brought you out of this land of enclosures, this land of pitch, snares, and traps. 29, and he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. So one now, he sets in Bethel. This is the house of, of the mighty one, the house of God. And the, the other he's put in Dan. And Dan is this, the judge, this place of judgment. 30. And this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. So now, and what God's saying here is both of them he's going to use as the one example, even this one in the place of judgment. Now we are we're going to witness now this one who has going to be sitting there where he shouldn't be sitting, this, the, even this judgment seat, 31, and he made houses of high places and priests from among all the people that were not of the sons of Levi. So he set this image now up in the place of the judgment. And he's gone, he's built these houses of high places, these Houses where the people would come and serve this thing that he has set up. Now they're making priests from all the people. These aren't Levites. God didn't say they could teach the word of God. See, and God's going to use this now. He's, he's going to use this. Remember, he's got one remnant himself, 32. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, and on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that was in Judah. And he went up unto the altar, so did he in Bethel, to sacrifice unto the calves that he had made. And he, and he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places that he had made. So what's Jeroboam done? He's ordained a feast. He has made a festival now in the eighth month and on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that Judah has. So a little copycat here. Eighth month. Now, this new beginning of the lesser light. We're getting a new beginning here of the lesser light on this fifteenth day now because the law is grace in understanding even to the lesser light. Now, he's going to make this feast just like Judah. Copycat. Because, see, what was getting ready to happen is this is when they finished the house of God in the eighth month. And this is would be supposed to be the mark of a, a harvest that was to come. Now, but he's a copycat. And he's, and he's brought these altar up and he's worshipped before these altars in the house of God. And he's set up these, this idol there in the house of God. And these priests that he's made and set them up in the house of God. 33. And he went up unto the altar which he had made in Bethel on the 15th day in the 8th month. Even on the month which he had devised in his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel. And went up unto the altar to offer. So we see what Jeroboam's done. God's trying to make it clear to you that he has went up to this altar. He's made this altar in the house of God, and he's devised it in his own eyes. This day he's made, this day of grace from the law and its understanding, even this new beginning of the, and is the work of darkness. Even this work of darkness in his own heart, did he do this? And Israel... In the end time, is going to represent these ten tribes who've been scattered among all the nations of the earth. 
because we're going to learn this in the, as we go through the story, see. Now God has scattered you out in all the nations because you didn't listen to his word. You didn't obey the law of God. You have turned from the Lord your God. Return to God that he can go before you and drive out all this wickedness. Let's move on. Let's move on to chapter 13. 